Boy, that song gets around. Doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Much appreciated. Uh, Jan, Jan from New York City, saves money alongside. Hey, TV, everybody. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so Jan, from what I understand, you have a very low ingredient recipe that you'd like to share. I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much. See, first of all, thank you everybody for being here and thank you, Steve, for having me on. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a time of the year we've, many of us have spent a bunch of money on gifts or some people might've even overspent that big bill that comes in at this time of year is coming. This is a great time where we can really start saving money even more at the grocery store. And the simplest method of all is to create meals that are surrounded by having low ingredients in the recipe. Now the recipe that I'm about to share is not mine. So I take zero credit. I saw this elsewhere. I forgot the name of the person. I'm sorry about that part because I couldn't forget the recipe, figure that one out, but it just works that way. But it is a simple method. And I said, I have to share this idea. All right. Basically, what you do is now this is if you like carrots, for example, this is a carrot soup. All you're going to need, listen to this for ingredients, whole carrots, not the fancy ones. doesn't have to be organic. It could be the El Cheapo carrots in a bag. Okay. The ones you get on sale for like a dollar. Okay. Get a bag of those, for example. And some uh, bouillon cubes, you could either use a chicken a bouillon or, or vegetable bouillon, whatever you prefer. Those two work the best. And I have a trick of my own. If you have zero bouillon, you could take um, some of that chicken adobo powder. That one is a great replacement for bouillon. So you got the carrots. You give it a rough chop, okay? You fill up your pot eyeball it for how, depending upon how many carrots you're using, how many people you're serving. So you know how to eyeball it with your own, put that water in, you're boiling it with the, um, with the bouillon, the water and the carrots. You say, but Janet, that, that sounds, you know, rather boring. You could add your own other seasonings to it or leave it as such. Cause remember we're on a low ingredient thing. We're trying not to use that many things, but if you wish to use some stuff, you can. All right. But you don't have to. That's the beauty part. So what you do is you make sure that the uh, carrots are nice and tender. And what you do, if you have like an, an immersible, you know, the blender, you can put it into the pot and puree it or take it out and throw it in a blender. Or if you don't have any of that, just literally like hand mash it as if you're mashing down mashed potatoes. And it's OK to have little bits of lumps and little bits of chunks in there. But a carrot soup is so healthy. If you happen to have leftover little vegetables you want to throw in there, I say go for it. You're not spending money on meat. Now to jazz it up a little bit, if you happen to have some stale bread ends in your freezer, this is why I say keep them, keep them, keep them. You know, many times children, for example, do not like to eat the ends of a, a white bread sandwich or any other bread sandwich for that matter. Don't throw that away. Cut, before you make their sandwich, you know they're going to waste it. Cut around it. Give it to them without the ends on it. Put those ends of the bread in your freezer. Anyway, eventually you could toast up. If you have toasted uh, stale bread, don't throw that out. Uh -uh. What you do, of course, it has to be just a little stale, not like really horrible, but stale enough. You put them in the freezer, cube it up, and throw it in the oven. Make your own croutons, a little bit of oil, a little bit of seasonings on that. Put those croutons, if you like, optionally for texture, on top of your carrot soup. Zero meat. How inexpensive was that meal? I can't wait to make something like that during the week. It's so easy. It sounds like it's lightweight on the system, and it's very, very inexpensive. And it has basic ingredients that most of us probably have in our homes or apartments already. And if not, a bag of carrots. Doesn't have to be the expensive carrots. I'm just saying. Steve, how does that sound to you? Come back. There I am. Okay. That sounds pretty good. Anything that sounds or, or has any... Well, one thing I like about the recipe that you just mentioned is I am a big fan of carrots. They're very high in beta carotene. 
Yes. Um, I guess if you're, as you're making it, I guess, even though it's low ingredient, it does sound like it's a blank canvas. So if you wanted to expand a little bit on it, you probably could. Yes. And add a little more. To no, I'd be willing to try that soup pans down just from the way it sounds. Um, oh, wonderful. I'm so glad. Yes. I, I would um, like to probably make it in the next few days myself. Just sounds I so myself <laughs> have got a good recipe as well. It's also low ingredient, not too expensive. Um, you get, it's an omelet actually. And what you're going to do is you're going to, you know, get a couple of eggs, beat it up. If you want to flavor it a little bit, you know, if you want to add a little milk to it to make it fluffy and you just, you know, you have the, the omelet cooking in your skillet. Now, if you have some leftover ground Turkey that's made, um, get a couple tablespoons or so, maybe three, and layer it inside the omelet. Mm. And, Yummy. Then, and then you get your favorite kind of cheese, whether it's Havarti or Munster, Provolone, Cheddar, whatever kind you like. There's no right or wrong. And you put a, you know, you take a piece and fold it over and you layer it across the top of the ground turkey. And then you just fold the omelet and let it cook a little bit, let everything melt. And I, let me tell you, it's not a Philly cheesesteak omelet, but it comes pretty close. Wow. So you're getting, so if you're looking for a protein based thing, yes. that's one that I highly do suggest. Yes. And what's good about the ground turkey, and you've also found out as well, is you don't have to pay buku money per pound no. in order to get it and to be able to accomplish the same goal as you would, say, with a good quality ground beef, which you're going to pay double and maybe half again for. Yes. You know, that I love that recipe of yours. That sounds amazing. I like that it's interchangeable. You can have yeah. that for any time of the day or night. That's what I like about that. And, you know, a lot of people, what costs the most money at the grocery store? The higher proteins like the uh, expensive meats, for example. So we work with the stuff that we have. And you can have a meatless night. Like, for example, uh, doing an omelet, great protein on a meatless night or even the soup, you know, make that your main course as part of the deal. If you, if you can, those mm -hmm. are really good. Um, the soup one is a very good, as they call them struggle meals. Like for that time when people like literally like looking around the refrigerator and go, what can I make with, with this or that? And that is absolutely uh, one thing for sure. Can you imagine there's a fly running around here in January, a fly, because I had the window open to get some fresh air. Mm -hmm. And uh, guess what? He decided to invite himself in because it's chilly up there. <laughs> you know, speaking of chilly and a different version, uh, Steve, a couple of people mm -hmm. I know, I try to encourage them to use ground turkey. Uh, a relative of mine did would is a diehard meatball eater that's beef. So I decided to pull a little trick. I made turkey meatballs. They did not know it was turkey meatballs. They thought it was my regular recipe. They did not notice the difference. I did a little trick in my meatball mixture because I wanted to put a little beef flavor. So I took a little bit of beef bouillon powder and I mm -hmm. put it in the uh, mixture. And maybe putting that in there might have thrown the person off for a loop. Steve, that person did not know that it wasn't beef. The meatballs, imagine. <laughs> you won't. You won't. If you <coughs> prepare <coughs> ground turkey just as you would... The ground beef had the same, whatever you do, don't change the recipe. Just do it exactly verbatim, what you add, what you add, what you add to make it. You're not going to tell the difference. You, you no. really won't. No. You're just eating a healthier thing is all you're doing. You're right. And, you know, Steve and I were discussing, remember recently you and I were going over this about, like you and I, for example, if we buy ground beef, we tend to buy the ones as like the, the highest ratio of less fat, like in the 90%, whatever, because we, we don't like fatty food. We Both of us, one thing we have definitely in common, we don't care for very fatty, greasy food. So um, then we realized something, wait a minute, why should we spend close to 8 or $9 a pound in certain areas of the country for ground beef mm -hmm. because it has less fat, 
Well, right. we could go for three ninety nine a pound for the ground turkey because it's less fat. Just like if you want, like I did that trick with the beef bouillon powder, a little bit in there gives a little bit of a beefy kick. Beefy taste. Why go away in that, The beef. <laughs> well, that's that. Whenever I do what you just mentioned, I want it. I want it. I've got beef bouillon. I want to add that. I want it. I see where that would. You you could seriously throw some people off. I did. I they, did. They won't know. They will not. Mm -mm. I said, how'd you like these meatballs? Oh, nobody makes meatballs like you. I said, oh, thank you. I said, you really like it? Oh, boy. I said, I'm so glad you enjoy that. I said, you just had a turkey meatball. What? <laughs> That's what really throws them is when you mention the turkey instead of the beef. You sure threw it all right. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be kidding, the person mm -hmm. said. I said, I kid you not. I said, because I had to take convincing myself because of the, you know, high prices of beef and uh well this is here here is what it is steve and if people more people could understand it suppose you used to be able to get ground beef for a great price sometimes you can i'm not saying you can't ever but uh more often than not around here anyway the prices of ground beef are pretty up there so i don't want to give up my ground meat type of option Right. So that's what made me say, I'm going to try because Steve has been telling me for many, many, many years to go to ground turkey route. So I finally listened. OK, I said, you know what? I, look, for Steve to say it, I'm going to try it. So that's precisely what I did. I was very happily amazed. I thought I would never be a ground turkey convert, but I am. I'll tell you another one, too, that's very good. I haven't had it as often as the ground turkey. It's also very good. I had it a lesser amount of times. Ground chicken. That's also a good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like ground chicken. I've uh, had that. That's a good, you know, sometimes if if they're, if you're not able to get your hands on the turkey, a chicken is also another. Anything. And you're not going to notice the difference in what I, well, actually, yes, you will. One thing I've noticed is with the turkey, it sits differently on your digestive. It's not. If you notice when you eat ground beef or any type of meat, it feels a little like a piece of lead in your, your, your gut. It does. It does. Yeah. Um, the ground turkey is not like that. It's more, more yeah. subtle, you know. But what I like about it is it's a, you know, you're, you don't, you're, you're, you're still cutting down on your fat, your grease, and you're still getting a decent amount of protein from it. Right. That's the big, that's the biggie. The protein, the protein, the protein. So, it, you know, if any of you guys out there that use the ground turkey, that's great. So you guys know what we're talking about. But for those of you that haven't, give it a try. Just try it once. You might say, yeah. I really, really like it. You might say, eh, makes no difference. Or you might say, eh, eh. But if you never try, how are you going to know? How do you not know if you're going to like correct? Because really, beef is like even the cheaper... Even Steve, I was looking around recently at like, you know, like stew meat, for example, which is, of course, normally the cheapest you're going to find that, you know, put in your slow cooker. Even the price of stew meat went up. I said, I don't believe this. I, I was like, I couldn't believe it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we have to adapt, but um, find alternatives. I have another, I, I just thought of another recipe I haven't done in a very, very, very long time. It's also low ingredient. If you like stir fry, your stir fry vegetables, mm -hmm. what you would do is you take your whatever you're going to cook it in, put a little oil down, your, you add the little water, and you cook your stir fry. But guess what? Take ground turkey and cook it with your stir fry. Uh -huh. And that gives your stir fry like a meaty effect. Yeah, you know, that's a great idea. And then you just add some soy sauce and you made it kind of. Yes. You know, yes. I've done that, but it's been quite a while since I've done. It's really good. And then once you make the, once you have the ground turkey and you've got the stir fry all together, cook you some rice, some white rice. I've got, and you know, this as a fact, I've got one of the simplest, easiest, most elementary recipes to cook rice. 
for whatever amount of rice you use, one cup of rice, two cups of water, put it in a saucepan, little pat of butter, put it on the stove, bring it to a boil, turn it off, set it on the back burner, wait 15 minutes, let the water evaporate, take the lid off, and you have rice. You're, you're welcome. And yeah, you're right, Steve, because <laughs> re I remember when I was rice, real rice phobic as far as cooking yeah. it. I mean, I was always grabbing, and I knew that it was more expensive, and I hated that fact. I'm like, oh, I'm just the only one that could cook. That's not true. I think the industry has convinced us that, oh, no, you got to get this instant rice because, you know, like we're all oh, idiots yeah. and we can't figure out. No, actually, no. There is an incredible price difference um, between the real rice, if you will, and the dehydrated one, I'm not saying it doesn't come in handy. Mm -hmm. And especially if there's like a big problem, like, you know, and you need to use it and it's in your pantry, something goes wrong, just use the boiling water. I get that. And that's terrific. But when when things are usually not horrific times and you can make your own rice like that, you could do it. Yeah. No, I no, I've I've grown well the the rice method that I just mentioned, yeah. I mean, that's the easiest way to go about it. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a no fail. It you know, only takes it, like I said, it's about a, once it comes to a boil, 20, 25 seconds, shut it off. You know, you can't burn it. And, but I, don't get me wrong, as I was coming up as a little kid, yeah, I remember the times that my mom had minute rice, success rice. No, I've had that as well, you know, over the years. But, but this right here, the one I'm mentioning, is less expensive because for one you you can get i think i just feel you can get more poundage of rice for your money yes that you would pay for the success minute you will pound for pound steve you will get more and who's to stop you from like so you can't use it up in one serving you don't worry about that you wrap it up put it in a good container i like to leave a little bit of water in there so it doesn't dry out steve yeah Cover it up, put it in your refrigerator, use it up within three to five days. And we're all trying to stretch our budgets. So rice is a really good accompaniment. Believe it or not, a, a one cup method of rice with two cups of water will comfortably serve two people. I kid you yes. not. Now, if you're only doing an amount, say, for yourself, you can do a half a cup of rice, one quarter cup of half a cup of rice, one cup of water. Right. Just remember, whatever amount of rice, you double the water. That's the secret. That's right. And the other thing, Steve, is actually I don't mind having that rice ready. That saves me time. You know, yeah. here's the problem, Steve. A lot of people, the reason why they lift up that phone and make that phone call and pay that extra tip, why at the end of the day, they are tired. They made a big mistake in the morning in all probability. What do we mean by the morning? Dinner is in the evening. Right. Right. But in the morning, maybe we didn't check our freezer. Maybe we didn't check our pantry. Maybe we didn't like have a, like a little bit of a plan, a little bit of an idea what you might have tonight and take something down. If you have your rice, you could always add it as a side dish or a yeah. bed or in a soup or a stew, whatever, casserole. Have certain components ready all the time. You will avoid spending money on that tip. One of the things I'm bad about, I still like it today. I'm not going to lie is I will take white rice and I will take a small pat of butter, a small pat of butter, mm -hmm. and I will put it in the rice and let it melt. And then I will add a little bit of ground pepper and sprinkle some Parmesan cheese and mix it all together and eat it that way. <laughs> I've done that, yes. So that... Yeah. that <laughs> but you know what? You can't get much cheaper than that because rice is not all that expensive. It really isn't. No. no. And one of the rice that I prefer, everybody's different. You could probably do it with brown rice. But one of the rice that I'm partial to, jasmine rice. Jasmine. Yes. Yum. I love jasmine too. Yeah, it's a little... I don't know what it is. It seems to be a little more flavorful or it's texturally text different. It is a different little bit of a slight uh, flavor difference. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> like a nuttier flavor type thing. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I hope hopefully this gave, you know, all of you guys some ideas. I want to try your recipe. 
That's yeah, fun. and I'm going to try your stuff too. Why not? Oh, you, you'll like it. it. It's good. And um, Well, thanks for having me here. Oh, you're welcome. Like I said, anytime. Oh, and I just wanted to mention, I'll just want to reiterate. I've, I've already left it in the community tab. I did want to mention a big thank you to everybody who sent me who sent me cards gift card everybody you know you know who you are i just want to say thank you and um you know i had a i had a pretty decent christmas i um you know my family did come down i found out some very good news that i was not expecting that i'm looking forward to which i'm very happy so i look forward you know to awaiting that once it once it shows up and um you know it was certainly an let's just say it was an it was certainly an unexpected christmas but it had a positive outcome more or less not that there was anything sad there or, or bad but you know it, it it had a positive uh turnout and um i'm happy with you know what's to come you know, in the next month. Great way so. to start the year, Steve. A great way to end last year and start your. Uh, right, year. right, absolutely. So, anyway, uh, guys, just want to thank all of you for tuning in. I'm uh, much appreciated. And um, yes, we are back. You know. And one more thing, Steve. Please yeah. don't forget to click his like button. Yes, please. I I would appreciate that because I I know I have that down here in the in the banner i always forget on my on my channel i always forget yeah but you know again i hope all of you have a great you know rest of your weekend and um you know we'll, we'll see you back here next time bye bye, -bye.